In this video, we're going to discuss the difference between variable names and object names. Rule number one, variable names need to be declared. Object names do not, but you can if you want. The first thing is to define what name means. A name is a letter or a group of letters. In SAGE, a variable or a variable name is a name that has not been assigned a value. Names that are assigned a value are object names. Creating an object name means assigning an object value to a name. Let's see some examples. B equal to three. List one equals in brackets and then in quotations, Robin, Owl, and Eagle. And our third example is PT equals point of three, two. So B, list one, and PT are object names. They've been assigned a value. They are respectively, B is an integer, list one is a list of string objects, and PT is a graphics object. Remember, in order for a computer to compute, it must have values. So a computer can compute with object names. For example, it can print the value of the object names defined above. You must use the command show for the graphics object. Let's see this. Let's start with b equal to three, and then we have a semicolon, print b, and when we evaluate it, we should get three. So here we are in Sage, we click in the field, we type b equal to three, a semicolon, print b, come down to evaluate and click, and we should get three, there it is. Now we're defining our second object name, list one. Let's copy this just like it is, control C, go to Sage, and, and here we are in the next code field, control V, and hit evaluate. There is our list, Robin, Owl, and Eagle. Here is our last object name, PT, it's a graphics object, point, and we'll just copy this, although in the picture below that you see there, I have made the point bigger and the graph smaller. <laughs> Control C. Move down here a little bit so we have space. And Control V and evaluate. And you can see that there's the point and the graph. So we're going to add the two conditions we said and get a properly sized figure. On the other hand, a variable does not have a specific value. It is a placeholder. The main use of variable names is as arguments of math functions and as arbitrary constants. Suppose you want graph, that is plot, the function f of x equals 3x minus 2. Here x is the argument. Arguments are also called independent variables. But until we give a value to x, the function f of x has no value. So we need to reserve a place for x and then we can assign it values, and then f of x will have values. But the main question at this moment probably is, how would we plot this function? We must first declare x as a variable so that Sage saves a place for it with a temporary value. Then we give the command to plot along with a range of values for x. By giving the range of values for x, we are giving Sage a way to calculate the values of the function. Again, computers have to have numbers or value. So how do we do that? Here is the basic code. Here's the declaration of the variable x, and here's the basic 2D plot code, plot three times x minus two, and the range of values for x between minus five and five. Let's take that code and put it in Sage. So here we are in Sage field, paste, and evaluate. And of course we get a giant plot. Let's change this to be figure size four. There we go. So the first command, var, parentheses, and in quotation, x, tells Sage to save a place with a temporary value of x. The second command says, just in case you wanted to know, 
divide the interval, the range of x, into 200, that's the default number of values, and then starting with minus 5, put each of these values in the place of x, and calculate 3 times x minus 2, and then graph the resulting point that now has specific numeric values. That is, the points are not x, 3x minus 2, which a computer doesn't understand since it's just a bunch of letters. They are actual points, minus 5, minus 17, followed by the next actual point, minus 4.95, minus 16.85, all the way up to when x equals 5, we get y equal to 8. So that's the idea of a variable. You're going to put values in it that the computer can understand. But first stage needs to save a place for that variable. The idea is the same with arbitrary constants. Arbitrary constants is just math speak for a variable that is not the official variable of the function. So you think to yourself, your teacher says f of x f of x equals mx plus b is the equation of a line where m and b are arbitrary constants. To mathematicians, the variable x, the variable x is the official math variable. But to Sage or any programming language, all three of these letters, these names, x, m, and b are variables. The computer cannot do anything with mx plus b until it knows the value of all three of those variables. The math difference for mathematicians like myself between official variables and arbitrary constants is that you graph the function only after assigning values to the constants and not vice versa. This is usually true in programming. Let's see an example. For example, this code gives the same plot as above. But in the beginning, m is considered to be an arbitrary constant. We still have to declare it as a variable. And then we have our function is actually of two variables at the particular moment when we define it. It's mx, and I didn't put b in, I just put minus 2 in. And now g of x is f of x3. So I'm assigning a value of m equal to 3 to get my line. And now I plot exactly as above the range on x to be minus 5, 5. Let's copy this code up a little bit. Paste in our code. Let's add that figure size right away. Big size equal to 4 and evaluate. And if we check, this is the same exact graph as before. A slightly more complicated example. Here's our slightly more complicated example. We declare the variables x and m. Again, we define f to be a function of both x and m, mx minus 2. And then we say that we want to have it plotted for m equal to 1, 3, and 5. And let's look a little bit at this show. First of all, the command show wants the graphics objects to be separated by a plus sign. So we can sum them because that separates these graphics objects with a plus sign. Here's our plotting. F of x, j. Now, j is going to be a dummy variable. That's our range, just as before. Um, we're going to change the color in here. That's why that sentence is in there. But j is going from 1 to 5, step 2. So that would be 1, 3, and 5. That's going to be substituted in here which is the place of m. So we're going to get the graph of f of x equal to mx minus 2 for m equal to 1, 3, and 5. In this video, each block of code is independent from the others. You do not have to have the ones before them to paste in the new ones. So here we go. Scroll up. There we go. Evaluate. So we have 3. This is the one where m is equal to 1. Notice that this range is much bigger than this range. So this is where the slope is 1, the slope is 3, and the slope is 5. Okay, I want to point out something very important. J is a dummy or counter variable. It's neither a variable name nor an object name. It's a dummy variable. And it does not need to be declared. So this J did not need to be declared. 
because at each step of the counting, it has a value. Here are the dummy variables, j and its values during the count are one, that's the first one right here, one, and then we add step two, that makes three, and then again, step two, that makes five. So the dummy variable does not have to be declared. And by the way, you can use m as the dummy variable. I tried it and it works, but that's kind of bad practice. I always use j and k. Finally, for fun, we look at a vector parametric function that defines a curve in space. Now, since it is a curve, that is, it is a one-dimensional object, right? It only has length, it doesn't have area. It has only one variable. The dimension of the object tells you how many variables it has. Since it is in space, it has three components. This is the helix. I love the helix. So the first thing we do is declare our variable. Usually we use the variable name t for parametric functions. So var of t there. Now, r, don't write r of t, that won't work. r is vector and then the double parentheses, sine of t, cosine of t, t. Those are the three components that will make it go into space. And then a vector parametric function is defined using the word vector, but graphed using parametric. <laughs> so parametric plot, 3D, because it's in 3D. The function is R, and of course we need to have the range on the variable. And then I added the thickness and the figure size so that it would actually draw. So let's take our code and see that it works. Paste in our code and evaluate. Now remember, because Java is having security problems, we have to click on Run. And there it is. So we are good to go with the difference between variable names and object names. And again, the key is rule number one, variable names need to be declared, object names do not. But you can if you want. <laughs> That's it.